It's March 2020. You're home from school on what was told at that time, an extended spring break. Because of this um, new thing going around, you can't go outside and hang out with your friends. So what do you do? You decide to get on Fortnite. Chapter 2 Season 2 is often considered Fortnite's second prime. During you know what, no one had anything to do, so for some reason, everyone decided to get on Fortnite. But was this season actually good? And would it stand up to the test of time? Or is it all just nostalgia? Let's take a deep dive into Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2. Starting on February 20th and ending on June 16th, this season lasted a whole 117 days, the second longest season only behind Chapter 2 Season 1. Chapter 2 Season 2 was originally set to end on April 30th, but was extended three times. The first time was due to players complaining that they couldn't finish their battle pass, the second time was because the season wasn't ready, and the third time because of the ongoing justice in society. Chapter 2 Season 2's start date was also postponed twice. It was originally supposed to start on December 13th of 2019, but was pushed back to February 6th to make way for the holiday season and for the Live at Risky event. Then it was pushed back again to February 20th to reveal secrets from the previous season and to test the new Unreal Engine Chaos Physics system. Chapter 2 Season 2 was spy themed with two factions, Ghost and Shadow, fighting it out bringing us five new POIs, the Rig, the Agency, the Shark, the Yacht, and the Grotto. The Battle Pass had seven skins including Agent Peely, Maya, Brutus, Midas, Tiantina, Meowsos, and Sky. Throughout the season, you could choose whether to make these skins a Ghost Agent or a Shadow Agent. After reaching level 100, you would unlock the Progressive Stars for the 7 Battle Pass skins, requiring 40 levels each to turn fully gold. That means you would have needed level 350 to turn all 7 Battle Pass skin styles gold, something only a handful of players were able to do. Now before you all yell at me for missing one Battle Pass skin, let's go over it. About halfway through the season, Deadpool appeared from a hidden room inside of the Agent Hideout. Through challenges available exclusively to Battle Pass owners, you could unlock Deadpool, the secret skin for the season, and the first secret skin to be a collaboration. At the 5 new POIs, there was a boss for you to kill which dropped the signature weapon. The Rig had Tiantina which dropped Tiantina's mythic Boombo. The Shark had Sky which dropped her mythic AR and Grappler. The Grotto had Brutus which dropped his mythic Minigun. The Agency had Midas which dropped his mythic drum gun. The Yacht had Meowsers which dropped his mythic AK, but when Deadpool released, he was moved to the Box Factory, and Deadpool stood there dropping his mythic dual pistols. Also dropped by the bosses was a Vault Keycard which was used to open vaults to their respective POIs, giving really good loot with the exception of Meowsers when he was moved. Now let's get into the season's loot pool. Oh boy is this going to be interesting. Season 2 had the most aim assist spam meta probably ever in Fortnite history. Just to begin, you had the Mythics, with the drum gun, AR, and minigun. Then on top of that, there was the rapid fire SMG, the normal SMG, you had rocket launchers, and the suppressed SMG. Oh, and don't forget the normal miniguns were also in the game. This season was peak legacy aim assist, and the aim assist debate really got hot this season. I mean, you literally had clips like this popping up everywhere. Season 2 was also the montage season. Songs like Party Go, GTA, and Blueberry Fago were in 90% of every Fortnite montage, and it just seemed like everyone was making one. It's not all bad though, as season 2 introduced some really cool things. Wall hacks were introduced, oh, I meant scanning, which every sweat loved. Choppers made getting around the map really easy. Crash pads were introduced. The decoy came in. Wait, no, it's not good. No one actually used it. The Kingdom Umbrella was introduced probably the most forgotten item in Fortnite, and this mushroom was added and then swiftly removed. The Chapter 2 Season 2 map had a few changes. Over time as the season progressed, Shadow and Ghost started taking over the 5 new locations, with the Grotto being the first, taken over by Shadow. The Rig followed being severely damaged in Battle for Control, with Shadow reigning victory. The Yacht was next with Deadpool taking it over and Meowth was getting bumped, going to the Box Factory. Then the Shark was transformed into a prison with Ghost taking control. Lastly, the agency had its own transformations over the season, as Midas was secretly building a device throughout the season to control the storm. Over the season, Midas' room was slowly changing as the device was being built, and underseen cables could be spotted in the water surrounding the agency. Eventually, Midas changed the storm, causing it to go in random directions and sometimes even off the island. This led to the live event. The live event for Chapter 2 Season 2 was named The Device, 
and it was actually delayed. What was supposed to take place on June 6th actually took place on June 15th. The device event was about Midas breaking this infinite loop the Fortnite Island was stuck in, and to do that, he had to break the storm. He ultimately failed, but it was a spectacular 10 minutes of visuals and what led to the expansion of the Fortnite storyline. Oh, and for the final two days of the season following this event, the storm was no more and a tsunami came to replace it, giving us a brand new swimming mechanic that was only available to us for two days. Of course, this could not be a Chapter 2 Season 2 video without talking about Chapter 2 Season 2's live event concert. What is often referred to as the best live event to this day, the Travis Scott concert took place from April 23rd to 25th and had five showings. Featuring six songs, one of them being brand new and heard for the first time in the concert, the event was a masterpiece and hard to believe that the entire event was made from home. That's right, the entire event was created while Epic was on a work from home schedule. It was the first live event to be used in the new Chaos Engine, and the first time that we saw the underwater swimming mechanic that was used in the Tsunami Storm. Season 2 introduced a whole new set of game modes based off the Spy theme, which was named Spy Games. Spy Games used a system called Tech to get loot instead of opening chests and searching houses. At the beginning of the round, three random different tech options would be available to choose from, each coming with some kind of weapon or item, and what we know today as an augment. Spy Games had four game modes, Operation Drop Zone, Operation Knockout, Operation Payload, and Operation Infiltration. Spy Games tech was unique and often made the game broken, given the ability to do things like deal over 200 damage with an attack. Fortnite Competitive came to a halt when the new season launched. Epic sent their employees to work from home and because of that, big tournaments couldn't run, so they ran a smaller tournament that would gather a lot of people's interest into Fortnite Competitive again. The Daily Duos Cup started on March 25th and would run every single day until April 30th. Every day Epic would give $375 to the team that placed first on every region. There would be two separate servers, one for PC players and one for the Xbox, PS4, Switch, and mobile players. This tournament would get a lot of players back to grinding the game and playing competitive again, trying to get first place. There was even big content creators who weren't very good at the game trying to get the win, like Laserbeam. Other than that tournament, not much happened. FNCS got back on and this was the first season that decided granting the Acts of Championships to all winners. So does this season stand to the test of time, or is it just nostalgia? If you look at everything the season had to offer, I believe that it actually stands the test of time. Apart from the terrible matter of spraying prey, made worse with legacy aim assist, and the henchmen at the new locations often having aimbot, there wasn't much wrong with this season. Of course, having your friends on with you every day just really helped with how fun the season was to everyone, but if the season came back today in its entirety, I think that it would be a great season. But that's just my opinion. I want to know what you think. Does this season actually stand the test of time, or was it just nostalgia? That was a deep dive into Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2. If you haven't already, please go check out my TikTok link in the description below, and let me know if there's other seasons that you want me to cover.